Hi guys, so this is a bit of a different video. I am here in Stirling in Scotland and I'm working with Grace Chocolates. They're a organisation that I feel incredibly passionate about because I'm actually also half Scottish. The system here isn't designed to look after women who have been in the justice system. When they leave, there's a huge stigma around their identities, the fact that they made a mistake and the fact that they're tarnished unlike men who perhaps have an ability to wear their, the fact that they were in prison as a symbol of their masculinity. Women are ostracized and shamed. There are no, there's not a place in society for a, a girl who has gone to prison in the way that a man has. Therefore, it's a lot harder for them to reintegrate and to try and get back on their feet, which is why Grace Chocolates is so inspirational and so crucial here in Scotland to help these women find their feet. So today I'm in the kitchen with Blue, who is the chocolate maker here, and she is fantastic. And she's the one who's been teaching me on Thursday. I was here for the whole day, working away, learning about chocolate making which is why today I, it's not my first rodeo. So I think you did mention you were in a relationship that was difficult. So I was in like, with my kids dad, it was a 10 year abusive relationship. I end up, you know, you'd say to you, oh, you won't get anyone else like me. So I end up, you know, thinking, well, if me and him slow up, I'm not going to be with someone. I'm going to keep threatening to take my kids off me as well. I didn't want to lose my children. And of course, it was through this work, which is how you got back on your feet. Yes. They've also supported me going to college, so my and graduate... Of course, what college um, certificate do you have? I now have a diploma with business management, mm. and my graduation is in October. Joyce, hi. Hello. It's such a pleasure to be here. So it's Monday, I've had a couple of days last week. I've been learning the ropes and it's been, <clears throat> it's been, it's been, it's been, it's been intense. That's how I would, I, I would explain it. Cause I've been learning the chocolates, um, but as well, I've just been really practicing my skills of listening. Um, Joyce, how do you see um, the difference between women who've been through the justice system as well as what well, as opposed to men and um do you think there are any differences between the two and how they're treated um yes the profile of women who've touched the justice system and men is very very different um throwing out some statistics so in scotland at the moment today there are about seven and a half thousand people mm -hmm in prison, either waiting their trial or having been convicted. Of that 7,500, about 350 are women. So you're talking about 5% of the prison population is women mm. as opposed to men. Recently, the Justice Secretary, Keith Brown, is quoted as saying that the justice system in Scotland is a system designed by men for men. Of the 350 women that are in prison, um, around about 5% are for crimes of violence for women. I don't know the exact details for men, but it's a lot higher. Women in the justice system, again, around about 80% are living with addictions. And it's understanding why they have chosen to live with addictions, what has caused them to turn to alcohol or drugs in the first place. Mm. Around about 80% of women are have lived with violence and abuse at some point in their lives. So it's better understanding that mm. it's not the crime per se that we're focusing on, it's, it's what has led them to crime mm. in the first place. Something as well you touched upon which I'm quite passionate about is the influence that you say a lot of these women through the in the justice system have had growing up around um, domestic abuse domestic violence but also just trauma 
And I think what you said, and I'd like to repeat that, is that we all need to understand not why they've done it, or sorry, not what the crime was that these women have done, but perhaps the environment which these women have grown up in in their lives that have traumatized them to a point where for them committing a crime is, is almost normalized. And I think it's understanding and having empathy to what they've been through growing up. I agree with you, but we also have to remember that we all have choices in life. Mm. Um, one of the reasons why the organisation or, or the chocolates are, are branded as Grace Chocolates Changing Lives is that there but for the grace of God go I. We do all have choices and it's about why when you come to a juncture in your life you choose one choice over another choice. We also have to remember that when there is crime there are survivors or victims of that crime and the impact that has on them we accept the women where they're at. We're not here to judge. The courts have already done that and handed out the sentences as they see fit. So part of the ethos of the organisation is to accept the woman as she walks through the door and look forward from there. that you can accomplish and people you know take you seriously and you know whether it's you or, or any of us just give us levels of responsibility where we feel like you know we are part of a team mm -hmm. and I know that when I'm in places like that I always feel really satisfied and happy I feel like I've accomplished something is that how you feel yeah it's nice when you're if you're busy and you can once you've completed orders and sent them out you know, to know that you've actually, well, somebody's going to enjoy them. I wanted to ask, do you feel that working here at Grace Chocolates, is that something you'd like to continue, do you think? Yes, I would, yes. Why is that? It's just such a nice place to work. Um, feels comfortable. Safe. Those are really good words. Safe and comfortable. 